Patch 1.13 was released this morning by Sony San Diego Studios. And within this patch, we were introduced to a new swing analysis window. Now, no doubt this overlay comes as a result of the criticism that SDS has been receiving for the past two months. One could even say since the release of MLB The Show 20 as a result of patch 1.10 that affected the PCI as well as the swing timing window. A lot of frustration even from top players who have actually stepped away from the game. So it appears with this patch, SDS has created these graphic overlays to help players understand with a deeper analysis of what SDS is seeing on their end because they are accumulating a ton of data from players all over the world. And it looks like in a sense, they're kind of doubling down on their hitting engine for this year because they are stating that based upon the statistics that they're getting, the hitting engine is working the way that they intended it to. So with this new swing analysis window, uh, SDS says first and foremost, it is to help gamers determine where they can improve. So here early on, they're already saying it's not us, it's you, but we're going to give you a little bit of um, more deep information with regards to what we're seeing so that you can have a better understanding of what it is you're actually doing with your particular players. They go on to say our approach was to recreate the window to conveniently present more essential information to the user all in one place. So once again, basically we're going to give you guys more in-depth analysis of what we're seeing on the back end that you previously did not see, which is causing your frustration with why your good good or good okays are not resulting in base hits. Um, they're going to say this led to auditing all the information itself as well as how the information was arrived at. Uh, the previous swing analysis window lacked critical information to tell a story about how inputs arrived at the hits players were seeing with a lot of important information scattered throughout different sections of the user interface and muse, uh, menus. Also, the arrangement of what limited information did pop up would often result in misinterpretation and confusion. So once again, they're doubling down. They're basically saying you all previously didn't have all of the information that we had, which demonstrated or uh, relate what type of outcomes you were getting. You think that you're hitting well, you think that you're getting good, good squared up on different types of pitches, but in reality, you're not. So here we're going to present to you the information that we previously had that you could not see so that now you can fully understand what you're doing and the results that you are actually arriving at. So here they say with the new swing analysis window, we hope to help users understand the context of why the hit happened. There are so many inputs to determining any play results, so we focused on covering the most essential information in an intuitive way. And so they've created these new graphical overlays for when you're hitting so that you can actually see your input, output, and the result. The swing timing bar is something new. Uh, the batter attributes have been presented. The launch angle or the degree of how the ball is hit. And then what the result of that is. And then also they put in here stadium and wind speed. Now this is intriguing because we were told that the wind speed was taken out of stadiums, but it appears that the wind speed possibly for some stadiums have still been there. Now I've noticed with the flags, the flags do not move, which was to represent that there was no wind speed. But if they're putting this here, that the stadium and wind speed is being represented. You know, I don't know if that's for offline and if that's for uh, online because online and competitive play battle royale events rank seasons the wind speed was supposed to be taken off so i don't know if there was some that was still there that they just could not code out not sure what that really means but i'm i'm thinking that's more towards offline for those who play franchise those who uh, when you grind against the cpu and those different things the wind speed is there in those stadiums so maybe that's what that is particularly for um they say here that the most essential inputs are on the left and will pop up on ball back contact. And the new information includes the batter's handedness, their contact power and vision. Um, what's been improved is the user swing timing input with a precision scale visualization, pitch location with pitch type and speed. So it says note that the location is by far the most important. 
user plate coverage input, new ballpark, and when occasionally impact the play result. So they said that we've primarily focused on inputs to bat ball contact. Some important inputs not shown would include swing type, power, normal, and contact, and then gameplay settings and defensive personnel and positioning. Some outputs and results info will slide out of the right post play. This info includes new launch angle and degrees, exit velocity at ball ball, at bat ball contact, contact result generalization, and new score book results. As we said, we also wanted to make sure there wasn't any misleading feedback and that led us to making improvements to contact uh, result feedback. And basically they said, we've engineered the contact uh, result feedback now found in the bottom right of the new swing analysis window. The reworked contact result system rates your hit as a combination of mile per hour and launch angle. Take note of how the combination of the two alter the result. For example, each type has different thresholds for good, okay, and weak that reflect their average and slugging value in baseball. Line drives have a lower mile per hour threshold to qualify as good because their launch angle gives them a high potential of being a hit or a double. Whereas high flies have a higher threshold to qualify because they give fielders a lot more time to reach the ball than in line drive or medium fly balls. It's important for a line drive and high fly to land in the same spot but be rated differently. The new system accounts for these nuances in a more reliable way. Better hits should now generate more good hits and good hits are more consistently valuable than they were in the previous system. And there is now more separation between the good, okay, and weak categories. Also remember, the contact result does not factor in the stadium and win or fielding running ability. So it says a fun fact here, apart from good, okay, and weak, your hit can also be rated bunt, miss, corkscrew checked, broken bat, foul tip, perfect, way inside, way outside, popped, uh, chopped, jam, rolled over, and out in front. Many of the descriptions are special subsets of weak. For example, jammed is an important feedback because it drops your swing power significantly even on perfect PCI placement. In the pitcher batter analysis, you can see for yourself how much category perform using the result filter. In testing, we found contact good consistently hit around 600 average, which is the average for multiple games, with most hits being extra bases, whereas OK averaged just over half of that and few extra bases. Perfect hits generally averaged 850, slightly higher or lower based on batter power due to home runs. So once again, all of this information, they're basically doubling down on their hitting engine. They're basically saying our hitting engine is working the way that we intended, uh, intended it uh, to work. And now we're going to give you guys more transparency with regards to how all of this meta data, how all of this is accumulated to generate the outcomes that you see. Now, of course, with them presenting this, in my opinion, I think the game is at its breaking point where for some individuals, this won't matter. It may even cause them to become more frustrated, um, especially those who are top players and they understand the game, they understand the frame rates, so on and so forth. But this will uh, heavily reflect the attitudes of players for the next three or four months with regards to the life cycle of MLB The Show 20. Go ahead and put down in the comments um, how you all feel with regards to this new patch. And of course, they didn't touch hitting and they did not uh, touch the PCI. They did not touch the uh, swing timing window. Basically, all this is is just more transparency of them putting out for us to see the meta analysis of what's actually going on in the back end with regards to this hitting engine. So nothing has been technically touched which to me that signals that SDS is saying, hey, our hitting engine is fine based upon all of the information that we're getting from the millions of people that play and all of the millions of statistics that we have accumulated and gone over, the game is playing the way that we intended it. Now, will that bring players black back? I'm not sure. Uh, basically, the game was really good at launch and, and a lot of people have stated all they had to do was decrease the PCI and increase pitching speeds and the game would have been perfect aside from the fielding issues and some pitching issues that they still have not addressed. Now with this update, they did state that they have made several fixes to the outfielders reacting to and catching balls in the outfield and or near the wall. They've also fixed an issue that will cause a player to lose control of the defensive fielder after throwing to a base in a rundown situation. 
They fix the bug that will cause runners to appear like they're skating while running to the base in certain situations. They fix the bug where the base runner would move up a base when the batter attempts to drag bunt while simultaneously hit by a pitch. They fixed an issue where commentary would not play for pitcher substitutions. They fixed a bug where the pitching meter line would not turn red on early or late throws. And then they fixed a, a few scenarios where the ball would appear to warp into gloves on pickups and catches. Now I will say with this, this has been a legacy issue because for the past three years, I've noticed that where there would be apparent warping, not only of the ball going into uh, the defensive player's glove and catches, but also just with running. And some of the, these things are connection issues, but when you're playing the CPU and you're seeing this, this is something that's going on in the back end um, with regards to the game itself and it needing to be patched. But I've noticed this for the past three years, just playing against the CPU, where there would be a lot of warping and different things happening that shouldn't. So it looks like they also, for ranked seasons, removed energy regeneration for starting pitchers that pitched in the current game. They also slightly increased energy regeneration for all pitchers that did not pitch in the current game. Now, something else that they also did is that they have updated Battle Royale where they have made uh, Battle Royale entries free until June 26th. Now that tells me that they're in a sense trying to reward or they're trying to appease the masses because they, they're they've been hit with an onslaught of complaints and frustrations about the game especially from some of their content creators which they definitely don't want that because that hurts pr also they've recently uh, released mlb the show now for 39.99 so i believe that they're feeling the brunt of all of the negative criticism and so this is a way to kind of throw out you know some goodies to kind of quelch or squell uh, you know squash the the negative criticism that has come from this game because so many people were anticipating MLB the show 20 to be you know the game that takes it to the next level especially with cross-platform play expected to arrive next year you know there was this big you know uh, with all of the new headliners and all of the new legends and new players at the beginning of the year that were introduced a lot of people thought that this was going to be the breakout year for MLB the show and they really have dropped the ball so this is going to be interesting to see if this is going to bring back some of the players who have already left um, how this is going to uh, affect their momentum moving into 2021 with the possible addition of cross-platform play but down in the comment section uh let us know how you guys feel will this recent patch bring you back to try to figure out hey maybe it's me that needs to improve rather than the hitting engine needing to be overhauled let us know down in the comment section how you feel and what are your thoughts with regards to this new patch and if you're going to continue to play mlb the show i'm ransom uh, this is Sports Gamers Online. Don't forget to hit that bell, put on the notifications. And uh, for all things sports and content related, make sure you subscribe to Sports Gamers Online. I'm Ransom. This is Sports Gamers Online, your number one source for the sports gamer.